Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. I'm Tim Apicella, your host for What's on Your Mind Hawaii. Today's show, we look at the recent controversy of the Beach Boys at Kohio Beach that currently work for STAR, which possibly may be replaced by Oahu Divers employees. Last week, STAR lost an injunction in court to prevent from being forced off the beach in order for Oahu Divers to put up their stands and their surfboards. On Sunday, a way of life was on the receiving end of that failed court challenge. Sheds, chairs, and boards were loaded up in a truck to make way for some change. The issue focuses on whether a culture of the Beach Boy lifestyle, which has been in place since the 1950s, will be replaced by a mainland company. Concern that a corporate approach will replace a way of aloha. Let's take a look at a couple of those photos which I just mentioned. And the next photo. That's uh, Star Rentals, and they've been in business for many, many years. And the, the concern is that the employees who work for Star are, are the ones who are ambassadors of Aloha as they, they interact with tourists and as they interact and teach about surfing and take them out on outrigger, outrigger rides. So, thank you. There are decades of history at Coheo Beach, and it appears change on all areas on all fronts is going to occur. In the center, the old time Beach Boys might be replaced. To the north, the sun shade pavilions may be removed if Honolulu Build number 37 is passed. And to the south, the ongoing beach erosion persists. Today, we get a glimpse of those halcyon days of Waikiki as we hear from our guest, Don Stroud, a neighbor, a friend, and a former Waikiki Beach Boy and a longtime Hollywood actor, and a gentleman who plays a mean set on the bongos. And now that interview. Aloha. This is Tim Apicella for What's on Your Mind Hawaii. I'm here in Hawaii Kai at the Esplanade, and we're, uh, our guest today is Don Stroud, who is a former Beach Boy down at uh, Waikiki Beach, and Don is a longtime Hollywood actor. Don. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, join us. And uh, I saw your uh, I saw your photo down by the Deuce statue yesterday right, right, right. in the Star Advertiser. And there you were, and um, you were protesting. You were protesting uh, with about 48 other people about um, basically the the removal of the Star uh, Beach Boys for uh, uh, Oahu Dive. Tell me about it. Well, it goes back years and years and years for me. When I first came down the beach, I was 11 years old. And that's quite a ways now. I'm 74 years old. And we lived down by, down by Seaside, down by the other side. And I'd come down by the Halakalani, and there was a 42-foot core boat there. And his name was Steamboat. It was the Kamui boat. And he ran the Royal Hawaiian. And the Outrigger Canoe Boys, it was the old day where the Outrigger Canoe was next to the Royal Hawaiian. It was a small club. But they had Steamboat, ran the Royal Hawaiian, and it was prestige. They came down and raked that beach every morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I used to beg the guys. I'd come down at 4.30. Can I rake for you? Can I rake for you? I was 12 years old. And we'd rake that whole beach every morning. And there wasn't a leaf or a just perfect and all the boats were fine and perfect and there was rabbit keikai and blue makua and blackout whaley and mud warner and richard taylor and richard watanabe these guys were worldwide famous beach boys and they wore their uniforms with pride they had these signa on there with their shorts and they were clean and they were great captains steamboat could take this boat out it was a 42 foot boat he'd take it out what you call first break in waikiki which is it gets about eight feet it breaks out about another 200 yards and very few canoes go out there it's great for surfing then you go down a little further and there was the Mono hotel and this great beach boy, Jesse, and them. Now, most of these guys are gone. Most of them are gone. This is my old days when I was a kid, mostly when I was a kid. And Jesse ran the Moana Hotel, spotless. It was like a Zen Chinese garden. They came and raked that place. The people had their umbrellas, their towels and stuff. It was first class. Then you go down a little further, and it's a beach called Kohio Beach. Just past the, the uh, Moana Hotel, the beach changes. 
changes tremendously. It always has been. I think my biggest beef right now with the Beach Boys and stuff is why the state doesn't come down and work on that beach. We have millions and millions of people that come to Coheo Beach. You notice down by the Royal and on that side the difference in the beach. They should work on the Coheo Beach. There's thousands and thousands of people down there. Like in my day... Well, when you say work on the beach, are you talking about uh, keeping it cleaner or, or some of the coral that washes up? Or what do you think? Completely re ramping the beach. The beach is gone out there. See, in the old days, that beach was two big buildings. That's a cement block on that beach. That is not really a beach. The water came right up to that sand. So that beach has always been like that. Coheo Beach has been a whole different world. And now what they want to do is they came down with this protest the other day. The boys felt that they were just getting kicked off the beach and get out of here and were taken over. Well, it's a change of business. It's like Haleawa with those guys. It was so different then. The Beach Boys were so different. You know, I like the idea of wearing uniforms and, and knowing who's who on the beach because now there's a lot of people that just hang around the beach and they hustle. They hustle. It's so annoying. Sometimes you walk down the beach and 10 people before you hit the sand will say, how about a surfing lesson today? How about a canoe ride today? You know? So you don't even know if they have the proper equipment. You don't know if they have proper insurances. You don't know any of it because you assume they're part of the beach, uh, the beach boys that are, are, have the concession on that beach. Absolutely. That's what I'm comparing the outrigger to the old days of the Holly All guys. You knew that these were Beach Boys. They had their credentials on them, and they were professional people. The new guys, they're great kids, and they're great surfers. And then there's the captains down there that's the most important thing, the steersmen. These guys were powerful, great steersmen. There's only a few of those guys left. So how that's going to work out, I don't know. I know the new people that want to take over, they, they're, they're diving people. You know, and diving and canoeing and surfing, especially if the surf gets a little bigger. It's a big difference in small waves and a little bigger waves. Even Waikiki waves, the difference in two to three feet and six feet is a major difference if you don't know how to surf and you need someone to look out for you out there. But all my years, all my years, and I'm talking about when I was a kid, I started hanging around the beach when I was 12 years old. Then I started working on the beach when I was about 16, just 17 out of high school. And I worked up there till I was 21 years old. So I know the old days, the great, great, great beach boys that taught me how to surf and how to paddle and how to swim and how to was duke down there at that time duke was sure oh, duke was down there big time he was with freddie hemmings and those guys were outrigger guys i paddled for the waikiki surf club which was the challenge but we were coheo beach guys by then when i got up I sort of went with the other guys there was two complete different groups of people but the coheo beach kids were yeah, they were a little tougher and kind of just, we were more surfers and stuff, but we could paddle. We were great paddlers. There was nothing like paddling those days. There, was, there wasn't that many clubs and stuff, but we would race against Outrigger and Duke and uh, Freddie Hemmings and them ran that club down there, the Outrigger Canoe Club. We challenged Waikiki Surf Club, especially on the 4th of July. They'd have great races on, the, on, the, on Waikiki Beach on the 4th of July. And it was great. But now, when you say those days, the old days, um, are we talking about mid 60s, the early 60s? Well, what? Definitely all of the 60s, all of the 60s. Those good 10 years in there, even into the 70s before I actually went to the mainland and they were doing Hawaii 5 0 one day. And the guy said to me, Could you surf? And Troy Donna, you couldn't surf. Not Hawaii 5 0, Hawaiian Eye. I'm very sorry, Hawaiian Eye. I said, Could you surf? So I t started surfing for Troy Donahue, and that got me off the beach. I said, Why don't you come to Hollywood and see what you can do? And, and, and the th things worked out pretty good for me actually you know i did over 100 films and over 200 television shows and it was a great great life i've been retired now going on 13 years back home and uh, it's, it's been wonderful you know what i mean i can't surf like i used to stuff like that i was fourth in the world at makaha during the duke hanamoko world championships which they moved to sunset beach but the guys now they make 10 bucks an hour right in the old days it costs I think two fifty for a canoe right now is twenty dollars. A surfing lesson used to cost six, seven dollars. Now it's I think fifty dollars or seventy five dollars. Uh, but the guys are making the ten bucks an hour. In a way, maybe it might be better that these guys that are the qualified guys that might go with the new guy because the deal's a deal. If he's gonna win the contract, the contract is gonna be what it is. It's new people came in, new people take over. But you gotta keep these guys 
you know, th- this is their home. They cherish. We, we got up in the beach when we were kids at five o'clock in the morning and we didn't leave till nighttime. It wasn't just the beach. It wasn't just work. It was more of home. I mean, that's where we, that's where we lived. I was brought up on that beach. Everything I learned, everything these kids learned is from the beach. But those days have changed quite a bit, quite a bit. I mean, well, the, the one of the people from Star Beach, they said, you know, look, it's not just about putting in a business model. He said, you know, our Beach Boys are the ones that try to perpetuate Aloha with the tourists. And, you know, I, I, it sounds good on paper, but does that really occur? I don't know. In the old days, that's exactly what it was. Things have changed, Tim. Things have changed on the beach now. It's you got to make that money, man. You got to make that money because if you're making ten bucks an hour, you're trying to get your tips and stuff like that. What are you going to make? A couple bucks a day. In the old days, you could get a plate lunch for fifty cents. You could have a beer for a quarter. So you worked on the beach. You made yourself fifty bucks. It was an amazing day. Now fifty bucks, oh, you, you made your salary. You know what I mean? But that's the difference. And I think these the Beach Boys feel they're being just tossed aside, just tossed aside, where a lot of these guys have been down there for 30, 40 years. Not all of them now. There's a whole new group of people down there now that if they haven't been around this long. They come and go now. They come and go now. Well, one of the, in the Star Advertiser, one of the representatives from Dive Oahu or Oahu Dive yeah. said, it's not like we're going to get rid of anybody. Now, I don't know if that holds true for a year or two or, you know, yeah. it's not we're going to get rid of anybody. And they're also saying that as an employer, they're going to be paid a higher wage. They're going to have a benefit package. They're going to have health insurance, um, you know, more of a corporate kind of mentality to it. But is that is that a bad thing if, if, if they are able to retain their jobs and now actually get health benefits and things like that? Well, if it's a true thing, you know what I mean? This is a major corporation like IBM. This is the, this is a little Beach Boy stand, uh, you know, with the insurance and things like that. So talk is cheap right now. Talk is really cheap right now. But the most important thing is mostly the old time guys that, you know, they're getting old. You know, a lot of the boys, some of my dear friends, I'm, I'm one of the oldest guys down there. Not that I work on the beach anymore, but every, all those guys are mostly gone. You know what I mean? All the great, great beach boys. And well, you've gone to a couple of funerals in the last year or two. Oh, many, many, many. And yeah, that's the one thing about Hawaii, the, the funerals you go because you grew up with these people. You grew up with these people. And they taught you how to surf and stuff. And they were this, you know, when I was a kid, they were all 10 years older than me, 10, 15 years older than me. And Bobby Choi and Leroy and these guys and, and Maurice and these people that were really good surfers. We were the kids down there. But we looked out. We looked out that I worked for Bobby Crusoe when we were first started on the beach carrying surfboards. And then I started going second captain. Then I got my license. Now, a license is another thing about license. Who is going to qualify the new guys for license if they're new guys? And who are the surfers? Is someone going to go out and watch them surf, see if they can surf? But you've got to be a waterman. A diver is quite different from a surfer. And a canoe man is quite different from a, a, a surfboard rider. It's different worlds. And you gotta, you got to control that canoe. you got six people in there that you're really responsible for, and you better know what you're doing, like Blue McCoy Jr. and these people. I'd go out with those guys anytime. And Blackout Whaley and them, they were, they were great captains. They were, they were great captains. But the thing is, we got to take care of our guys. we got to take care of our guys. Most of them just get by. You know, and I think the whole protests and the thing is about losing your gig losing your job and losing a way of life that's your way of life down there you know what i mean like i said when we were young i couldn't wait to get up at 4 30 in the morning go rake the beach wow what a thrill but it was a thrill and go surf for three or four hours go get your plate lunch for 50 cents go back out and surf maybe take a few canoes out take a few lessons out and i made what 30 40 bucks and i lived in an apartment i had a car and everything it was just, the times were just so different now Oh, it's a hustle it's a hustle it's a hustle and the worst thing is uh, uh see down by the royal any teddy bush and those guys they don't have to hustle they come from the royal and they do it and then by the outrigger now is uh, is the is the Sher- sheraton outrigger and, and dukes down there they don't have to hustle it's all very quiet but they wear their uniforms and they're really the place is different Coheo beach must change it has to change it's getting 
I hate to say it, but the homeless down there has a lot to do with what's going on down there. And that's that's a major, major problem down there, down by where they used to play cards, down by the wall. And well, that's there, uh, just to let you know, that there is a Bill 37 that was introduced from Councilman Trevor Ozawa. Yeah. And he wants to he's basically saying this is a site of illegal activity. And he wants to do is rip out all the uh, sunshades that are along Cohio Beach. The, yeah, they've been there. That's what everyone tells me when I interviewed them last couple of weeks ago. And they said, this had been a part of Waikiki. It's a landmark of Waikiki. So how do you feel about if they were to tear out those sunshades? I hate to say it, but it's become a real seedy, kind of bad part of Waikiki. There's not great people down there. There's a lot of people that, I hate to say it, but they're from the mainland. And a lot of drunks and bums. They're not homeless people. This bunch of drunken bums, if you ask me. Now, I'm not talking about the Beach Boys. I'm talking about these guys that hang out. I've been going down there for years now, and the same guys sleeping on the same bench, on the same sidewalks. Every time I walk down there, you have to pay $500 for a room a night, and you've got to step over a homeless person down by Goyo Beach. It doesn't happen down by the Royal and the Wawana side. They wouldn't allow it. But up here, they're just letting it fall apart. And now they're letting the Beach Boys fall apart. They want to maybe clean up the beach. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful idea. But you got to take care of the boys. It's an old Hawaiian style. You got to take care of the boys. And that's what it is. So you got up early in the morning and you went down to the by the Duke statue and you have about 49 other people. What what gave you that motivation to just get up and go and get out there and, 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 and basically be a protester? Well, you know, that was that was where I grew up down there, man. I, I was down there for a good ten years and it was probably the most wonderful time of my life. I mean ever I made over a hundred films, but my memories are from the beach. It was it was a wonderful time. It really was under the coconut playing ukuleles and the and the moon and the stuff and all that. It seems like we kind of really lost a lot of that. And the new guys, they're great kids and stuff like that. But it's just, you know, I I'd like to see them in nice uniforms and stuff. But see, they want them to carry uh, computers and stuff, and and you could call in now for a surfing lesson and all that. I don't think a lot of the old timers are capable of, for computer work and stuff like that because they're they're old time guys, man. It's like, you know, you're going to walk around. They say you want to go to wear shoes. How can you wear shoes working on the beach in the sand? Well, you take your shoes off when you go surf, put them back on. I don't understand some of that. I think the uniform is great because you know who's who. Like what really made me mad, I said about it, I saw people hustling blocks away for people who didn't even get to the sand yet. Surfing lesson, canoe, hey, I'll give you a deal. Come to me, I'll take it out for five bucks instead of four. That's that's not where it's at. Yeah. And it was not like that before. So I would like to see a lot of the old days come back. I would love to see a lot of the old days come back. You know, there was one idea that I heard yesterday. I was down on by Cohio Beach just trying to gather some information so I could do this interview. And one idea was why not why not let the city have them have one concession on one part of the beach and let Star have their concession and see how it goes. See how the two, well, they'll, comp they'll compete, but also see how, you know, the tourists respond to it. What, well, do, you what do you think of that idea? Well, there's two down there now. There's, there's the Star Beach Boy, then there's another one that's been down there for years. They've been down there together, and they all seem to get along. They all seem to get along. But don't forget, that beach is only like 50 yards long. <laughs> it's just a little, it's a little dirt lot. It used to be a dirt lot. It used to be a strip house over there. The Waikiki Stands used to be there. The Mar and the Mary Grand Bar used to be there. And the Blue Room was in front. They tore all that down, put some grass with the Statue of Duke, and put some sand over the cement. That's their beach. How far did those buildings get down onto the beach? You said those concrete footings are right there. High tide, you couldn't walk by. But by the surf rider, too, when it was high tide, you could only walk on the wall. So all that sand has come down by the Royal Hawaiian there. Used to be a wall there, and someone fell and hurt their leg on the wall, so they tore the wall out. And at the same time, took all the sand out, too. The wall belonged there. This is going back... I was a kid when that wall was there, so it was like a long time ago, but it kept the sand in. So someone tripped and broke their ankle, changed the whole formation of the beach like that. But um, it it's just it goes back to taking care of the guys. Don't just come down and say, okay, get out of here. We're moving in because you better watch out because there's an expression called coming down. You know what that means? No, tell me. Okay. If you take off in front of me on a big wave and I say coming down, you better get out of the way. Yeah. Coming down. 
Now, these new kids, if they bring in a bunch of people that really aren't qualified, those old-time guys are going to be coming down. So they're rough kids, man. These kids are rough. These Hawaiian kids are tough kids. There's no question about it. They're tough. You know what I mean? They're, they, they're strong and they, they party, but they're tough. And it seems like they just came down and said, okay, you're all dismissed and we're going to bring in our guys. And maybe I, I wish it has to get more clear about really where we're going here because if they're going to hire those guys back, and what is the minimum wage? Ten bucks an hour? Ten dollars and ten cents an hour. That's what they make in the middle, middle minimum wage. And I think you keep your tips, which, you know, I don't know how much they make a day now or stuff like that. But it's, uh, it's a new breed of people. They're wonderful kids. They're good surfers. They're all good surfers. And the captains that I know, uh, Aki and a few of the guys down there, they're great, great canoe men. I hope they hire those guys back because – I know there will be some problems if they bring in some new kind of guys from who knows where. Well, and and the point is, you, okay, even if you retain them, will they have so many new rules and corporate standards that just make being a beach boy really tough to even continue to do? You know, that happens sometimes when you get a corporate culture into a an existing culture, and they're completely different cultures. So hopefully they retain them, and hopefully they, uh, you know, they pay them better, and hopefully they give them wages and uh, like you said, I mean, it's it's part of the culture down there, and you hate to see it go away because it's it's why people come to Hawaii. Yeah. They come down to that beach, and they, they want to take their surf lesson, and they want to take a canoe ride, an outrigger ride, and um, you don't want to see anything get in the way of that. See, like in the old days, the catamaran. There was one catamaran down the Kamui, I mean the uh, Kapokai, and best of them used to run it. Then there was another one. Okay, next door. They got along. Then there was another one, and another one, and another one. So you start hustling. Take my boat. Take my boat. Same thing now. Take a lesson from me. Take a lesson from us. Where are you going? Don't go over there. Come to us. That's what's happened with the two, the two concessions. Not fighting each other, throwing stones at each other, but hustling against each other. Well, and the tourists don't like to be hustled. I mean, no one, no one, that's why they come to Hawaii because it's relaxed and it's easy going. And if you have to be on the beach and get, you know, being torn this way and torn that way because, uh, you know, you have competition on the beach. That makes it really, really stressful for a tourist, and they don't like it. To be asked for a surfing lesson, but to be asked five times before you get to the sand is could be very annoying because then you go, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'll do it another time. So that's kind of what happened it was, it, compared to the old days. And I think the new people, I don't know if they know about the old days like, like we know about it. You know about the old days because we lived it is – to go back to that would be nice, nice uniforms and stuff. But as far as now, you could call up and make a reservation for a surfing lesson at for seventy-five dollars, and the guy gets ten bucks an hour. So the houses get money, and the house wants to give the government or the, the state or whatever fifty-one percent of their money. I don't know how much they're going to be able to pay the boys and pay insurance and all that. I see. I don't believe that about the insurance and all that. I'll be surprised to see it. You know what I mean? I'll be very surprised to see it. What do you think the win-win solution would be, given given it's it's how it's laid out right now? What do you think it would be a win-win for Star and win-win for o- o- um, Oahu Dive? Well, I think Star will be out. That's Rutledge. I think they lost the bid, and a bid's a bid. They lost the bid. I hope they take the best of the best guys down there. It could turn out to be a better benefit them if they get some insurance and stuff. Those guys don't have any insurance and stuff like that. The old guys, when they got sick, they were on their own, man, or broke your leg or couldn't work, and uh, they were on their own. So I'm hoping it might turn out to be a good thing to take the best boys and qualify them because like Didi, Didi down the other side by the outrigger, they're so qualified and so it's, it's just you can see the difference right away as soon as you cross that line. You know, it's it's just – they got to clean up the whole situation, that whole situation down there. They got to clean up. And then there was a while for there were some druggers down there and there was this and that down there. And those things. See, in the old days, you've you got to go. You, don't come, you come down the beach the old days. You, got, you, don't, you, you screw up. You're, get it, you're out of here. And the big boys would tell you, hey, son, you're out of here. So they self-monitored. They self-monitored themselves. And if, if some beach boy was causing trouble, and then they would just say, you have to go. Absolutely. Steamboat and Mud and Taylor and those guys, you don't want to mess with them. They, they ran that beach. They ran that beach. And it was, it was run very, very well. There was, no, there was no stealing. These guys down down by the same want to take out the thing by Cohio Beach. You turn your back, they steal your purse now. My day wasn't that, but in my day there was no graffiti down there either. And there was no homeless either. So it just shows you how the world itself has changed. Everything has changed so tremendously. And I walked down and I just... 
it makes me so sad to, to walk down. I park at the zoo and I walk down to Coheal Beach and then I walk down to the Outrigger and stuff. It's just, there's a line. As soon as you cross the line, it's like a different place. So I'm hoping that whole area changes. And they want to knock out those pillars and all that. Maybe it's for the best. Yeah. I hate the homeless. It's such a tragedy. I feel for the local Hawaiian people with homeless with stuff. But they ship these people from Chicago and the mainland and stuff like that. They're just a bunch of drunks and stuff. And they, they're they sleeping right on the sidewalk, on the benches that people sit there and watch the waves. Well, they got a one-way ticket from wherever, and now they land here, and then they're stuck. So... There's a actually there's organizations trying to send them back, you know, so. But anyway, well, it's my hope, Don, that, um, you know, the, the, the days of, of, of your I mean, what your memory is of the beach, maybe it gets back to that again. And uh, with a little you know, fingers crossed and a little hope, maybe we go back to those pristine days of uh, Coheal Beach and um, the great beach boys of, of Coheal Beach. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping for the best for the guys, especially some of the old timers that are really, you know, 75 years old. How much canoes can you do and how much surfing can you do? So it's kind of a hangout place also, too. You know, it's your coffee shop. It's your it's your living room in a lot of ways. You leave your house and go to the beach all day and all night. And uh, I'm hoping that the, the, the new guys that come in, if this is what's going to happen, I think the other team is going to be, oh, it's just a new organization coming in. They take the best of the best guys, and they make them wear some nice uniforms, and it might cut out the hustling and stuff, and go fix up that beach down there, talking to the state or the city or whoever is really the boss down there uh, of doing that. They brought in sand a few times. Two days later, it was right out there. It, it's so weird, you know. It's just so weird. So they got to figure out something, what to do. And then guys like George Downing and them, they're so afraid to build a wall, like like out in uh, uh, Kui Lema and those places that make those beautiful ponds and stuff, because it'll spoil the surf. So there'll be no surfing out there because there'll be a backwash with the wall. So there's a lot of problems that they have to deal with. But I'm, my most important thing is take care of the old timers and the boys and the beach boys. They're good people. They've been on the beach their whole life. And you gotta you gotta help them out a little bit. That's that's what that protest was all about. Well, Don, thank you so much for oh, sharing thank your you. thank, thank you for you. sharing your history and your yeah. and you know your your recollection of what the beach was like back then. And yeah. like I said, hopefully we get back to the days where we can uh, get back to those days. Yeah. And, um, and this, I heard you mention that I had a hole in my shirt. Yeah, Don, I'll you had a Don, you had a hole in your under your armpit here on in the Star Advertiser and. I'm going to tell you why. That's my Waikiki Surf Club shirt. That shirt is 40 years old. It's like wearing your colors if you're a biker, man. Everybody had their colors on down there, and those are my colors when I go down the beach. Well, you had your yellow colors and a little rip, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tim Apicella here with Don Stroud. Hello. Don Stroud, an old beach boy down in Waikiki and a Hollywood actor for many years. And, Don, thank you for sharing your time on What's On Your Mind Hawaii for Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Ahui ho. Aloha. Mahalo. Well, that's our show for this week. I want to thank you very much for uh, watching in. And if you have any comment to this show or any of the other previous shows for What's On Your Mind Hawaii, feel free to pull up thinktechhawaii.com and make a comment. Or just go to YouTube and pull up my name, Tim Apicella, and uh, pull up the show and make a comment. So again, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next, or two weeks from now, on June the 5th. And aloha.